Research shows that careers that require brilliant minds attract a much lower number of females. Why? It is a complicated question. Stereotypes, unintentional bias, lack of encouragement to name a few. Girls are brilliant. In fact, here are some brilliant role models. Born on May 1, 1831 on a farm in Norwich Township in Upper Canada, Emily Stowe was the first female public school principal in Ontario, the first Canadian woman to participate in medicine openly, and a founding member of the Canadian Women's Suffrage Association. At 15, Emily became a teacher in a one-room schoolhouse where she taught for seven years. Her journey to achieve equal opportunities for women began in 1852 when she applied for admission to Victoria College in Coburg, but was refused because she was female. She was, however, accepted by Toronto's Normal School for Upper Canada, the only advanced school open to women in British North America. She graduated with first-class honors in 1854. In 1865, Emily Stowe applied to Toronto School of Medicine, but once again she was denied admission. The doors of the university are not open to women and I trust they never will be, the university's vice president told her. She was absolutely outraged. She promised herself that she would do everything possible to enable women to have the same opportunities as men. Dr. Stowe's experience fighting for the acceptance in the medical community turned into a passionate feminist. In 1877, she helped found the Toronto Women's Literary Guild, Canada's first suffragette group, set up to fight for women's rights and improve working conditions. Thanks to the pressure from the club members, higher level education in Toronto was soon available to women. In 1883, the club was renamed the Canadian Women's Suffrage Association. In 1893, Emily, along with her daughter Augusta, participated in a highly publicized mock parliament designed to publicize the inequalities faced by women. It was a parliament where all women participants, using the same arguments men had used against them, refused to give men the vote. It did not go unnoticed. Emily Stowe later died in 1903. It would be another 14 years before women got the vote in Canada, and much of the credit goes to Dr. Emily Stowe, teacher, physician, and passionate suffragist.